Hello to all subscribers and listeners of this channel. You're listening to Obsidian Radio. And this is another part of the series. This is Why Evolution is Bullshit Part 4. Bad Arguments Made by Counter Evolutionists. Number 6, A through D. So in other words, the guys who agree with me, that evolution is not proven. Unfortunately, some of you all made bad arguments also. Evolution is the hypothesis masquerading as a theory that people believe is a fact. We now shall delve into the many bad arguments made by counter-evolutionists, people who don't necessarily accept the theory of evolution like myself. They don't always make the best arguments. And yes, there are people who question and or challenge the theory of evolution who don't make the best arguments. Fortunately, they resort to tactics and arguments that are either somewhat weak or they're cliched. Let's look deeper into what we should avoid when us critical thinking types of people step up and challenge a philosophy posing as science, such as the evolutionary theory. Let's go. Six A. One major fallacy by a counter evolutionist is the why are apes still here argument. Basically, the argument goes like this the quote, why are there still apes here if we evolve from apes? Or why are there still apes around? That argument is a very bad argument, and here's why. The actual argument put forth by evolutionists is that Homo sapiens sapien, human being, evolved from a common ape-like ancestor. As in, there was an ape that slowly diverged and became different species. It became many different apes that are alive today. So there should be apes today when following the logic of evolution, or what the evolutionists are saying. I am a counter-evolutionist, and I agree that the idea of us having a common ape ancestor is wrong, but the way many counter-evolutionists argue it is absurd. By asking people, if we evolve from apes, why are there still apes? If you keep using that question, that only shows that you're not listening enough to what they're actually saying. We as counter-evolutionists must first accurately understand what evolutionists are saying. Then we must make sure we understand the context. Quote them verbatim, then pick up out what they stated. We have to poke holes in their argument, which ultimately the theory of evolution itself is and pressure them to stand by their ground and defend their view that evolution does indeed occur. That's what we should be doing. So, to ask why apes are still here is not only a fallacy. It shows that many of us counter-evolutionists are not listening intently enough to what evolutionists are actually saying. It exposes our lack of ability to form arguments, pick apart statements, Listen and actually hear what's being said and find holes in what's being stated. We can't keep doing that. 6b. A lot of counter-evolutionists, people who challenge evolution, they rely too much on religious scripture. And I must confess, I am not nor have I ever been a religious person. Quite frankly, I hate religion. I'm not a fan at all of there being some giant invisible sky king that dictates our everyday life, our future, our conduct, or how we treat others both as individuals and as groups. I'm not into that. I've never read any religious scriptures, and I'm not reading any religious scriptures right now. I might read the Bible in the near future to understand what's written there, but other than that, I have no interest in religion or, or religious text. So I find myself befuddled when I see counter-evolutionists constantly refer to the Bible or any other religious text or religious scripture as a resource to use improving evolution to be false. I'd rather you not do that. Most people have not read the Bible cover to cover. To cover. Most people do not, nor have they read any religious text or scripture. A growing number of people are seeing themselves as atheistic, agnostic, or at the very least, not religiously affiliated. So when challenging the evolutionary theory, please understand that quoting the Bible gets us nowhere. As far as I'm concerned, most people won't know what you're talking about because they never read the Bible. Many people will laugh 
it off as a non-argument while only a few people will understand what you're saying but what are the chances of those few people that they're going to disagree about the fallacy of evolutionary theory they might already be on your side so you're not really changing their mind anyway 6c counter evolutionist this is a big one you try too hard to prove that evolution is false and that the evolutionary theory is incorrect. Wrong. Don't argue like that. This is what every counter-evolutionist should be doing instead. Instead of trying to prove them wrong, you simply need to challenge the person that says it's true. We need to get into a position where we get them, the evolutionists, to back up their claims. And they need to back up their claims with evidence, critical thinking, objectivity, facts, experiments, measurements, repeatability, observation, etc. Again, as I've stated before, we can either accept a negative reality, as in something did not happen, prove a positive reality, as in something did happen, or we can challenge someone else who asserts that a positive reality, aka something did happen. Please keep this in mind when arguing with an evolutionist about this topic. 6D. Please don't waste time doing these things either. Counter-evolutionists must not waste time interrupting, attacking the evolutionists personally, trying to prove evolution to be false. Again, it's not that you're proving it to be false. It's you have to get them to prove that it's real. They're the ones asserting it. They're the ones they need to stand by their word. And please do not quote some scripture from some ancient religion or some ancient holy book. I'm convinced that that doesn't really help the conversation. And won't move the conversation anywhere at all. 6E. Also, I want to add about the false dichotomy. This annoying false dichotomy needs to go away. And what I mean is the idea that an evolutionist has to be anti-religious and a counter-evolutionist is religious is absurd. Let me explain it this way. There are people who do not accept evolution as a real thing who are agnostic, who are atheistic. As well as, there are people who are convinced of evolution, they do buy into it, they accept it as a reality, and a lot of those people are very religious. So to continue to push this dichotomy, that if you are if you believe in evolution, you must be against religion, and if you counter evolution, you must be some religious fundamentalist, not only is that silly, but it shows how narrow-minded a lot of evolutionists really are. Because they're, the they're, they're the ones that always tend to accuse anyone that counters the idea of evolution of being religious. It's like, I'm not religious. I've never been. That's not my mind state. That's not what I'm into. You've got to open your minds to the fact that many people think differently. And our thought processes cannot be fit into such a neat little dualistic box. And also, another thing, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I want to reiterate. As far as the saltwater amphibian ancestor, going back hundreds of millions of years, I'm going back to something that I most likely stated earlier somewhere in the series. And I explained how it's impossible for the first amphibian to exist and crawl from the ocean the way we've been told. The original story was that some fish-like being or fish-like organism crawled from the ocean onto the shoreline, somehow grew legs, and then began to exist as an amphibious type being. The problems with this are, there are almost no such things as saltwater amphibians, not in the current taxonomy, nor in the fossil record, as far as we know. According to their physiology, modern amphibians can't live in salt water. The salt would eventually kill them, considering their ability to absorb gases and nutrients through their skin. To live on land, this creature would need leg-like or leg structures. It would also need fully developed lungs. And both of these legs and lungs type structures would develop while the organism was under the water where legs and lungs were completely or almost completely useless. It would also have to be at least a few hundred of these ancient amphibians crawling out all at once, being able to produce offspring that could somehow do the same. And none of this has actually been proven by the evolutionary theory at all. That's all for now. 
Please like, subscribe, share, and donate to support this channel. You all have a nice day. I'm out. Peace.